Okay, uh, it's it's October seventh. Uh, this is six scale. Um, everyone, please add yourself as an attendee and uh, add agenda items. Um, feel free to add agenda items as we go through. Okay, um, I the first thing I have on this list is bugs, but I we don't need to um, we don't need to start with that. I was kind of hoping we can start with something else. Did like David, do you want to talk about uh, like the, your proposal at all? Like, do we have any things that you want to bring up with that um, first? Uh, so for the virtual machine pools, I think we're just wrapping it up. Um, so I would encourage anyone who is interested in this to definitely go and look at the proposal. I, I guess maybe we can yeah, uh, post that in the notes again, maybe as well, or I can do that. Um, my goal is to have this merged as soon as possible. Um, and the next step will be, uh, I'll, I'll try to go ahead and create a PR that lays the foundation of all this. So it's going to have the, the API and just a really basic controller implementation. And then we'll kind of keep um, fleshing it out from there until we kind of fulfill the entire design. Okay. Yeah, we talked about this one last time. This was the removal of the VM config API. Let's see. So um, there are a few comments here on the like some text. Yeah, so Roman and I discussed what you're looking at briefly today, and we'll probably sort this out today or tomorrow. It's it's pretty minor. His comment here is um, when we look at the um, the policy of selection of virtual machines, either for scale in or update, um, how do we have some kind of basic um, optimizations? And so if That's we it. want to select uh, VMs are shut down first or paused before we actually touch active virtual machines. How would we do that? And I think that would fall either under random, the random based policy, or perhaps just a something we call a default policy, which would be we uh, would take at random virtual machines that fall in kind of a tiered ordering. So uh, do we have any VMs that are shut down? All right, take a random selection of one of those for uh, scale in. All right, so mm -hmm. we've exhausted that. See, do we have any that are paused or inactive in any way? Select one of those. And then from there, do we have any that are active? Uh, select one of those. So we can, it's just naming. Okay, so this is like, so the, I guess the assumption is that, um, you know, that we'll do, we'll, we'll have some sort of optimization that, that we're going to take, we're going to use the um, the running status of the VMI to make a selection maybe before, before any of these, or would it be? Um... No, it would be the order policies would definitely get filtered first, Okay, in my opinion, because I think that's the expectation. And I think this would only apply to base policy when you are okay. um, selecting a base policy that's kind of at random. So if you select a base policy that isn't random, so you say, I want oldest first or newest first, then we don't really have any optimization we can do there because you've told us exactly what you want. But if we have a policy like random or we just call it default or something like that, then we have some leeway into doing some more um, maybe user-friendly optimizations that people would actually like. Uh, and it wouldn't hinder people who didn't um, expect it either. Because if they're choosing random, for example, um, they're going to get VMs that are potentially active shut down. So if we do a little bit of help there, maybe that's not terrible. OK. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah, I mean, I think if you have whatever, I think that, you know, as a concept makes sense to me, I think that would be good to have, I think, in, I think there's a description in base policy if you don't have it already. I think that would that'd make a lot of sense. Okay. Sure. Um, and then uh, the only other one I, I scrolled by. So these two, it looks like you, I don't know, I think I didn't, I haven't gone through the doc, but I think you've made some changes here that um, either to reflect these or, but I'll have to go through and check these. Um, and then there was, um, this one uh, for some metrics. Uh, right. Do we? Do you want to talk about this one? Like some ideas that we have um, for around metrics. Yeah, I uh, I actually meant to respond to this. I think I even typed it all up, and I decided that we should talk about it in the meeting, and I totally forgot. Um, yeah, so thanks for bringing that up. I don't have a great um, sense of exactly what will be needed quite yet. I thought of a few. Um, let me see, you had, well, let me look oh, at yeah, we'll 
I, these are just a few. You had uh, one that was good in here that I did think was okay. Uh, um, number of VMIs restarted in a pool. Uh, that can make sense. Um, so the pool. Do you want me to talk through some of what like I was thinking with these? And yeah, yeah. Um, talk through what you were thinking. If you and I, what I was specifically interested in, are you interested in these metrics for load testing, or are you interested in them for production like settings? I was I was trying to consider a little bit of both. Like if I was running, I was trying to consider the perspective of you know if I was running this in production, you know what I'd like to see. And then a little bit of um, how we can um, how we can integrate with some of the work we've already done uh, with the performance testing. So like the first one is like so we've you know the number of VMs were started. Um, this could this could like so we're we have like this expectation that um, the pool is going to be some size. Like we want to know. Um, you know, what's like the churn, like, you know, how many, like, what's, you know, how VMs are being killed and, and recreated, like, how many times is that, you know, how often is that happening? Because maybe we can put a rate to it. So like how often like things are being, because I could kill a red, I could kill a VM anytime I want, just delete it. How often is that happening? Um, that'd be kind of interesting to see. Um, then there's, um, oh, so what, what do you think of that as an, as an idea? I think, it makes sense. Uh, yeah, I do think that makes sense. I'm, I'm curious if it's restarted. What we're really looking at here is, uh, I don't know if restart's the right word. Is yeah, it it's sort of, um, it's like um, churn was kind of what I was going for, like um, like the, the number of uh, replacements or. Yeah, yeah. I see what you're getting at. I'm just trying to think of how to accurately represent that. So it's number, it's like you're almost wanting to track the number of shutdowns and starts, possibly even independently of each other. Uh, because that maybe, I don't know, maybe it is truly restarts. So a restart would be virtual machine uh, shuts down and gets started again. A yeah. turn, turn would be the virtual machine got completely deleted and replaced eventually. Yeah. So I don't yeah, know. I think, are you, I think you're, I, the reason I use restart was because the assumption is that we're, I'm taking, deleting a VM and then we're replacing it with like the same one. So it's like, um, I it's replace or whatever. I'm like, I'm almost restarting. I'm just killing it and, you know, letting the thing start a new one for me, the same one. Like it's going to have the same name. It's going to have the, be kind of like yeah. a, really a, a vm restart from like a power standpoint but more like a you know i i brought in a new one that's the exact same <laughs> kind of it's it's more of a replace like or a, but it's the measure churn is the goal yeah so maybe starts is um accurate enough the number of boots that have occurred because that's what we really care about um, we don't really care about the shutdowns unless they result in another start. Uh, yeah, the number started. So they had the rate, but because like, does it get a bunch of things from the number, the rate? Like, just, it could be just you know, our, the same metric as we did with like, um, like the we have we have a, a bucket of them. I don't know, like whatever. Like the number we can get a we can get a rate is really what I'm getting at. It, okay. Just to tell us like um, how how often it's happening and stuff yeah. like that. And then, okay, so let's say we, yeah, we get a rate for starts um, that occur, and we, we could also do shutdowns so that makes sense in the future. Um, and maybe speak to the next one, detached from yeah. the pool. Okay, um, I, I'd say kind of um, similar, it measures um, how, um, it can measure how often we're doing detachments. Um, it, could, it could be like, there's sort of an assumption that we're doing something with that detached uh, VMI, like it could be forensics, it could be, um, we want to take it under some sort of management. I'd kind of want, I kind of want to get an idea of how often those events are occurring, 
you know, how when we, we need sort of special attention on these VMIs. Um, is this occurring at once a once a day, once a week? Um, so another kind of another rate that we could we could learn a bunch of information from. Mm. That can make sense. I'd like to see that in practice. That that's useful before maybe jumping into it. Okay. Uh, and the last one, VMI perf metrics. Yeah. So um, we have the we, we you did all the phase transition times. Um, what I was thinking is that maybe we can do a little bit with the labeling here. Uh, we can attach. Um, we can do like a. We can see how a pool is performing. Um, as a, as a unit, um, we can have a label for the pool or something um, so that we can know that these view mines for the ones for this pool, this is how they're performing um, as opposed to just general view mines created or pool or view mines for other pools. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. So if you had lots and lots of pools in your cluster, you'd be able to isolate uh, these phase transition times by pool. And that would be, yeah. uh, I think, really useful because it would tell you exactly which one's causing the trouble. I wonder how hard that would be. What would you think? That would just be a label that we put on or would we actually have a new, so it'd be a new label on the metric, I guess it would be virtual machine pool name or something. Yeah, I think I think so. Because I, mean, I, I think the expectation or my, my expectation is that we wouldn't, I wouldn't expect someone to to like have thousands of pools if they're like like one VM in them, which would be like the equivalent of the you know like the thing that we didn't really want like to have where we just label we have like per VM labeling. Sure. So I'd ex you know so that so that's sort of like our the bad case, but I mean it, it'd be possible here, but I would I would I wouldn't really expect it, but it, it gives us that opportunity to like um, you know like to to know the you know the VM performance per pool. So I think like. It, I think just in general as a as a way to to sort, I think it makes makes sense because that, that case where you're just doing one VM pulls, I don't know, doesn't really make any sense. I don't know why you're doing that. Yeah. Why you'd want to do that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. Um, so I think the two that uh, out of what you've listed that makes sense to me are um, adding the label to the uh, phase transition times and then the um, we should investigate perhaps after we've created the feature, how we'd want to track starts and stops and kind of understand turn. I don't think we have a great understanding quite yet. I'd like to maybe not completely uh, flesh that one out yet, unless you feel pretty confident. I, I don't feel confident about it yet, but that, I do agree that that would be useful. I'm just not sure how to represent it. Okay. Yeah. So my, the re so the, my expectation sort of like when I'm thinking about this being used, I create a I create a pool object, and my expectation is that I'd have some sort of controller that's going to say, um, um, you know, either times up like this this um, this VMI is is finished with its work, or you know maybe the VMI itself terminates after it's done with this work, and so I expect I'm expecting that there's going to be a lot of VMIs that will be um, that will be cleaned up, um, and it'll happen. It will happen often. I expect that a lot. And so having the rate of, of VMIs that are clean, that are removed per pool gives me um, a concept of like, say, I, like, cause I haven't sort of the, each pool is an identity kind of when I was going off with the perf, like, you know, there's in, an image associated with the pool or so on and so forth. And so I can tell like, okay, how many people are finishing their work or doing whatever, or whatever, how much work is finishing for these types of VMIs and, how often it happens. It sort of, it gives me like a, it's kind of like, a, um, it, it gives me a sense of like, you know, what, what is happening. So like, maybe I can make predictions about things like, you know, if say this pool is getting a lot of, um, a lot of attention. There's a lot of things um, happening here. Maybe I need to increase the size of this pool. So I have more um, VMs available, you know, more warming or warm VMs available to be used because there's just so much churn right now. There's just so many being, you know, so many people requesting it and, and deleting it. So that means, you know, there's just things like that. Like I can sort of get like a bunch of data from it so that we can uh, make informed decisions about, you know, what's to come next. Oh, that's interesting. So in your use case, I'm, I'm kind of familiar with it. Um, somebody logs into one of these VMs and then when they're, they are done, 
does that virtual machine cycle completely? Yeah, like it would be removed. Yeah, like we. Yeah, okay. It would, Got it. Yeah, it'd be removed, and then uh, then it would be fresh. So you have basically the pool is like a bunch of open slots, and you, you either yeah. it's either a one or a zero whether it's being used or not, and there's no right. other. Okay, and I'm not sure if this metric would help you there as much as you would need some sort of custom metric specific to your use case to understand essentially how many of these slots are full per pool. So you have to associate the users uh, connecting. Well, it's 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 not so much about like knowing the, how, how, how much is full. I'd say it's more like about the rate. Like I want to know like the here's how, to, in order to make an inf some sort of an informed decision, like it'd say like, okay, there's a lot of people that are starting. Um, there's a lot of starting VMs, a lot of deleting VMs in this pool. There's a lot of activity um, of people that are using this kind of pool, perhaps I should, um, perhaps I should increase it. You know, maybe I should decrease it. I don't know, something like that. There's, there's there could be information based on the, just on the activity. Cause that's like what the metric tells me is that is because there's a lot of VMs that have been replaced. Um, there's a lot of churn. There's a lot of activity with this type of VM. I guess, I, I get what you're saying, but wouldn't it be more accurate to say I've got this VM pool and I've got this many um, idle, like open slots, and then say um, if the percentage of open slots to uh, use slots falls within a certain threshold, I need to scale up or down. Like that seems mm -hmm. like it would be more close to what you want because you, you're wanting not to run out of. Uh, free slots, but you want to keep the margin probably narrow because you don't want to um, use un, like, unnecessarily consume resources that aren't necessary. Yeah, I, I maybe I'm complaining, complaining two things because like so in by informed decision, like I, I'm I guess what I'm saying is that as if uh, a computer would do it, but I mean these metrics are for humans, so it's not like I wouldn't use these metrics to make a to, to have like the controller scale up. But I guess the the idea is that I, as a, so to go to the human side of this, which is I think um, to, to isolate that part is that I would be able to know that that as a user or as a as, as the administrator that this, um, that there's a lot of activity here. I think that's, it's really all it is. So forget the informed decision part. It's more, it's really that I, I've noticed that there's a lot of activity um, with this kind of pool um, I, I think that's really the only con the conclusion that you that you draw from this, which I, I don't know. I find that to be useful, but I don't know. I, I maybe like is it, it's you. I understand what you're saying that it could be just for this use case. Maybe people don't do this. Like maybe they don't believe VMIs after they're done, and the pool just stays full, um, and so that's that's not really relevant. This this that conclusion wouldn't be helpful for them. So yeah, I mean I, I could see that um, that argument too. I, okay, so if you're using it just informationally, like you just want to look at a dashboard and not using it to make decisions, yeah. I think what we're looking at is we're trying to measure activity on the VM yeah. pool. Uh, so I think measuring the rate of shutdowns and stops or uh, starts and stops is probably the most accurate way to, to represent activity. Or maybe it's the number of scale and scale. Uh, I yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. <laughs> a, yeah, it's yeah. An, yeah. There's an assumption I, I think here. Yeah, that that I measure activity. I would measure activity based on my use case by the number of um, starts and stops. But then maybe not some someone else might not. Okay. So yeah, I, there is. I think there's an assumption, but I I don't know. I mean, in other cases, like in the general case, like would you care if you know you had a bunch of starts and stops? Like, I mean. It could be, you know, useful if it's something that um, you um, I, something was happening to your pool, something that you didn't expect. Maybe a lot of VMs were just being deleted by for some reason, or maybe they were failing or something. It might be something that you could alert on um, because it's not something you expect. So I, I so I, there could be other use cases there if you if you know if it's something that you you know if you don't expect a lot of restarts and you mm -hmm. do see them. Yeah, I can get that. I think it makes sense. Uh, so the rate of start and the rate of stops, um, I can get behind that, I think. Um, so here, here's what I would uh, write in the document. 
I think it definitely makes sense to have phase transitions per pool because we did want to do that per VM, but per pool, I think it makes sense. And it also gives us useful metrics because these are supposed to all be uh, virtual machines that are identical to one another. Um, it will look a little strange because when we first create VMs, uh, it's going to take a long time in the scheduling uh, or the, no, because that, okay, forget it. All right. So yeah, it makes sense uh, to have the phase transition. I think that uh, start and stops make sense as well. And I can document uh, both of those as being desired metrics. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know uh, that that's going to probably be one of those follow up things. So we'll, we'll document in, in the design. And then once we kind of get the base features and everything, we'll uh, look at adding those and it might get changed a little bit at actual implementation time. But I think we know enough to be able to document those three. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Yeah, we can. Okay. That's good. Okay. Um, I don't know. I don't see any other items on this. I mean, for me overall, it, it looks good to me. I'll probably just read one more time um, and then add my review. Okay. All right. Um, I will. Um, so let me clean up. I'm going to focus on cleaning up this document because I noticed there's some, some comments that are just kind of typo sort of things. And um, I'll document Roman's thing and I'll document uh, this metrics thing and I'll reply to your comment when I'm done so you'll know when uh, when to look at it. Okay. All right, thanks. All right, let's um, uh, we can do bugs. This is actually the oh no, when I want date no mind. Here we go. This is the bug I actually wanted to look at was uh, right here. Um this was weird. Um, I don't know if you've got any idea about this, David. This was um, something we had noticed. So we brought in the some of the phase transition metrics, and there's actually this occurred during um, the outage that one of the outages was more so like it was more like that the situation where we found the um, the vert controller panic issue, and one of the things that came out of it was this the um, the label on the um, the VMI face count metric uh, changed. And then, yeah. so you can see like the, yeah, the value value gets reported, everything's running. It's just now it's value. Yeah. Um, so here's what happens. When a virtual machine instance is first created, that phase label is empty. And okay. until it gets reconciled the first time, uh, it's not gonna be set. So it's possible that what's happening is lots of VMIs are created, but they're not being reconciled yet. And then they all get values afterwards. So what happened here uh, with your um, This was the vert controller restarted. Um, and the, I think it was just the vert controller. I don't think it was handling. I think it was just for controller and it was the panic issue and then this appeared, the, um, the uh, labels disappeared. Interesting. That's not what I would have expected because all the VMs kept running, right? They didn't get restarted. Yeah, they're, they're okay. still there. Yeah, like you can see the count is exactly the same yeah, yeah. and it actually normalizes. Like eventually they get the label. You can see the slide as it goes up, becomes, and, and the value of value goes down eventually. Wow, that's weird. Oh, actually, no, here it is. It's handler restarts. Um, it's, it's, I, I noticed this first when the controller restarted, but I think it is, maybe it's handler restarts that was, that he's got. Okay. But anyway, the, some of the control plane restarted and, yeah, and the values, the, the values is here. Yeah. And it recovers though, so eventually. It does, yeah. It eventually finds the, the correct values. It, it eventually, I, I don't know, I don't know how to classify. I mean, it just, it finds that they're running. Like we basically, it's, what this metric is, is the number of running VMs. Okay. It's just that so, count and we look back phase. I wonder if this is some sort of um, 
Prometheus uh, interpretation of uh, things over time. So here's what could be happening. Uh, you said vert handler restarted, but it, this would only make sense in the case of vert controller restarting. If your controller restarts, there's going to be a period of time where the leader election um, lease isn't given up. So we're going to have no vert handler for like 30 seconds. I'm sorry, for controller. Ah, okay, we're talking the cluster scope again for control. We're not going to have it for controller for about 30 seconds or so, uh, waiting for that lease to expire and the new leader to come online. So if Prometheus tries to query for information related to virtual machines during this time, it's going to get nothing. Uh, so there's going to be a period of time where it gets, it's just going to look like there was a gap, I guess. And uh, once the new virtual controller comes online, depending on when it gets queried, it may or may not reflect virtual machines uh, existing yet, depending on if it's caught up to its informers or not. I'm not sure exactly what it's gonna get reported during that time, but eventually it will all get caught up and the correct values will get um, reported by the new VERT controller. So during this time between a VERT controller crashing or being restarted and the new one taking uh, control and syncing correctly, things could get kind of weird. I'm not sure exactly what would be reported and exactly how Prometheus or even Grafana would interpret these results. Yeah, I think, I think what I'm like, so I think like the thing we need to figure out here is that this during this period, so I think the test is like, um, uh, let me put here, like, I think, so like restart, restart a vert controller, and then we need to get, we need to look at what's in Prometheus at this point. Like we need to follow up. We, we first need to verify we see this and then we need to like um, get the data from Prometheus because that would be, that could at least rule this out if it's Prometheus or, or whatever, that's that's um, you know, the metric service that's reporting this or if it's at least something else, but let's see. So that's, that's kind of what I would like to see because what you're saying is curious to me because I'm wondering if like if we cracked open Grafana or cracked open Prometheus, we saw there that the, the values are just gone or something because it's synced and then it's like, no, there's no, no values for these, but we see them, they're there. We have number, we have a count of these things, but we don't know what they are or something. Yeah, that, that's what I would look at. That makes the most sense. It would be, there is a case, like I mentioned in the very beginning, where uh, there will be no phase, but it's very brief, and it would only be for new VMIs at the point of creation. And that doesn't look like it applies to this. Yeah, let me, I'm just gonna put it here. So we'll do, uh, let's try this. So like a test with a, we like restart the virtual controller. I'll do it this way. See what's in the Prometheus data. Yeah, that would be. I think that would help this bug at least get a little bit further along. Okay. Um. All right. That makes sense. Let's see. Uh, what other bugs do we have? Uh, we still have a few of these, like the pod disruption budgets high. Um, I still see this. The work queue ad rates very high. Yeah. I'm merging this one right now. Here. So this is a PR. Um, I just put in the chat. I would like to see us begin tracking um, some of these perf scale results. So until oh, we get okay. that, yeah. Perfect. 
so, lost track of this one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about it too. I was just looking at my what I had open. Once this gets merged, we'll we'll start to get an artifact that uh, shows us um, the expected like transition times and everything, and API calls and other stuff that occurs during our uh, density tests. Once we feel comfortable with what we see, we should start setting some thresholds and then start yep. you know, ensuring that we meet those thresholds. Um, yeah. Okay, great. Um, yeah, that, that's, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I definitely, definitely looking forward to that one. Okay, good. And then, um, yeah, so this one, um, uh, let me, what was I? Yeah, like, so I, this one, I'm not sure how we can at least make progress. I think we need to, I think this is, one of those areas where we do the um we do the um uh the, the profiling and maybe see if we can notice anything um yeah i mean because i like we see this as well and um like on, on our hardware and yeah i think we just need to commit to doing a profiling i think um let's see what we can i, I think that's really just the well, let me write it in here What is it? The um, so the work controller disruption budget. Is this the density test that he's running? Let me see. Right the point of view. I think so. I guess what this came out of. Um, so it is the density test. So I could yeah. investigate this by running the density test myself and like just lower the number of virtual machines. Uh, for my environment that can actually run. And theoretically, I should be able to, to recreate this. Uh, yeah. Can you CC me on this uh, as well? Just so I get it in my queue. One okay, let's see disruption budget. We have this one that's been around for a little while. This is the work queue performance. This was kind of a general one. Um, we have a bunch of these like metrics. Like here's work queue latency, which everything everything seems like the same there. And then like, here's the pot disruption budget and uh, the unfinished work. Yeah, I mean, I, I, this one also see a lot of on our end too. Oh yeah, I think I, did I post this? Yeah, I did. Or when did I post this? 20 years ago. But I thought I posted new ones. The unfinished work. I did not post new ones. Mm -hmm. I did see, so, oh, I remember this. This was, okay, so this was Marcel did this experiment again. And we did, that's what we wanted to. We wanted to check QPS and see if it made a difference. Um, and we didn't see much of a change but we did see this we did see the storage error rate go away i don't know what that is but um that was one of the changes unfinished work still high from the the handler i wish like unfortunately one of the hard things to quantify like versus sort of imagine is uh exactly what this is like i, I don't I understand like unfinished work, it's like, it's a thread that's running long in the controller, but I don't understand this measurement. Like we're saying, this is telling me that we have a 12 minute running task in, in a controller, hmm. which is, which just sounds crazy to me. It's possible. Yeah, but it's, it's interesting. I, I think maybe this is another thing we maybe just need to do some profiling on um, to learn some more info. Okay. We've had errors in the past, for example, where we make an API call somewhere, didn't set an appropriate deadline on it, and it just hangs. And so it essentially consumes a thread for a long time, possibly indefinitely. I think we've resolved those I'm aware of, but that kind of thing is possible. 
Yeah, we see um, Tomas is looking at this. Um, okay. He, where is his? Yeah, I think this is just going to tie into this. Let me just try to do it. Um, so he, uh, Tomas, was, um, has already looked. Is already looking at making a change. I think he did. He post a uh, a PR for this. Hold on, I need to see. I think he did. Let me actually for it. Yeah, I'm gonna tie this over. Okay. Um, Roman can't join because he's. He just told me he's working some some CI issue, but he he delivered a message and he says uh, that um, we should make Cupert run fast. That's what he wants us to focus on. So. Very nice. Okay, this is uh, this is Tomaso's um, uh, change, David. So okay. You on that. I don't know if you're aware of it, but the um, this was the um, how he wants to reduce the memory usage. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, so I just got back from PTO uh, today. Uh, I actually, I was gone Thursday right after our call. I left. I've, I've literally been gone for a week until this call, practically. So, I will look at that. Um, that's interesting to me. Okay, cool. Yeah, I kind of need to. Look at, I'll look at this one too. I need to tie myself up. Kind of like CC myself or sign myself. I don't know how to sign myself. All right, I'll just keep a tab open for it then. Okay, yeah, that, so this is, um, I think, what he's doing next for the profiling. Okay, uh, work, for P, work Q performance, um, and then we've got modules, are using more CPU than requested. Um, I think, do we just set limits on this? Like, is this like we, What do we do about this one? Show controllers are using more CPU memory than requested. How many pods are scheduled? Mismatch the CPU requests and usage. I think we need to review this one. I I don't remember what what it would be the next. I don't we want to do with this one. All right. Um, we have. Let me just pick my cello. All right, we need, yeah, we need to scope that one. Okay, and then um, profiling uh, prior to fairness. I actually saw this, so um, I re we actually ran into this. This is interesting. We actually ran into this the other day, um, an issue with this. Uh, with the current one to one default settings, um, which groups all of the, um, the, uh, the, I guess the priority of, um, of uh, all everything that's a service account, it, it runs as a service account into um, one queue. And so we actually ran into an issue because um, Qvert was creating or doing a lot of work and it conflicted with OBS and um, they were filling up the queue and they were actually were getting requests rejected. So I had to give Qvert um, its own priority queue so that it didn't conflict with anything and actually made the work. The, um, the rejections, the 422s go away, or the 429s go away. Um, but this was at large scale under a lot of stress. So it was something that I don't think many people will, will really see at the moment, but it is something to uh, we can consider. I don't know, I, I, I know this is something that I need to do, um, or at least to, to, I think I need to get a little bit more information about, but there's, I think at the meantime, like 
it's something we can, I don't know, we can capture in the future. So would, would you, you said that we shared it with OVS, this API throttle? Yeah, so by, yeah, by default, everything that runs as a service account is in shares a, its own, it shares a queue with every, everything else that has a service account. And since Qvert has a, a service account, it's obviously shared with you know, everything else. And they were conflicting. They were oh, okay, so this is as simple as adding a new queue and assigning to queue. Yeah. All right, got it. Exactly. Yeah, that's so this is essentially like this this issue, like kind of, you know, when I talked about this. Yep. That's what I that's one of the things I wanted to get at. But the is that the minimum. But the the larger tab is sort of defining the queue length and other things, which I don't have enough information, but at the very minimum, having its own queue I think makes a lot of sense. Okay. All right, something, uh, we'll keep it over for now. I think something I, I'll get back to at some point. I haven't just had a chance yet. Um, and then, uh, oh, we did this one, right? And then there's profile under highlight, which was Tomas's. Okay. Um, did Tomas, oh, hey, Tomas, uh, you're here. Hi, the, um, Hi. Yeah, hey, did you want to talk about um, your change at all? Uh, yeah, so I can, and talk briefly about it. So basically, uh, I added pagination to cluster profiler, uh, which means that I'm basically uh, making uh, list uh, pods requests uh, in pages, right? And I just return to a user like continuation token together with uh, profiler results of that pods uh, from, from, from one page. Uh, so yeah, it's so it like helps us to control how many, uh, how much memory uh, Virt API uses to actually store uh, in memory the cluster uh, profiler results. And additionally, I've added label selector. So basically, you can select the pods uh, with, as usually with, with label selector, which we all know from kubectl command. It's it's basically the same syntax. It's yeah, it's parsed the same way. So we have like these two me mechanisms, uh, pagination and filtering, uh, filtering with label selector to, to reduce the memory usage and it both works. So I've checked it on, on a large cluster. Um, yeah, so if, if, if you can, David, have a look at it, uh, I would appreciate it. Sure, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Um... For your um, pagination stuff, when does that uh, token expire? I guess if we try to do another uh, dump yeah. without a token, or what? That's that's defined by Kubernetes, uh, and it says I think it's between one week and two weeks. Something so Kubernetes provides this kind of uh, limits, right? Uh, so it is, it is not precise, but you can actually check it in the uh, in the documentation of a list call. Uh, but I think like a week or like at least a few days, that's like more than enough, right? Oh, so we're using the list as yeah. the, oh, interesting. Okay. And the other option you had was a label selector and that would let us choose just um, just like all the vert controllers or all the vert APIs without. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, in practice, what um, what have you used? Have you used both of these or have you, for yeah, example? Yeah, so, so, yeah. so I've checked both of these. Like for instance, for weird, weird API, I just, there's a cube weird.io label, right? So I use that, it works. Uh, so interesting is, in, interestingly, the page size. So I thought that like 20 is like, we should handle it just fine. But it turns out that at least for me, there's some problem with uh, fetching large files through the weird client. Um, maybe that's because of, uh, of the fact that I'm like, you know, far away from the data center actually, which I'm in Europe, this data center is in, in US. And I, I've noticed at some point that kubectl copy, it fails as well for me with larger files. So maybe that's that's just because the cli Kubernetes client is not uh, reliable uh, in copying large files. I, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, but smaller page sizes, they work for me. 
I get some internal stream error when I when I try with like 20 page size 20, which would be hundreds of megabytes. Uh, so that's the only issue which I've noticed. But as I said, this might be caused by the distance between me and data center. So I'm curious if for your use case, the label is enough. Um, because the label would yeah. let you select controllers and you could probably get just like one or two BERT handlers if you needed it. You'd have to target the exact BERT handler. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so for me, it works. It's okay. It's enough. But, you know, I was thinking about adding uh, field selector as well, which I guess would cover like every use case, probably, right? That you can select by the, uh, I don't know, by the name or whatever whatever you want, right? Because that's, I guess, that's two filtering methods we, which kubectl has, label selector and, and field selector. So I'm okay with adding that as well. Uh, it's like, should be, should, you know, it's not, uh, it's not a big deal to add this. I, I don't need it right now, but maybe to have like, you know, um, full coverage of, of use cases. Why not? Yeah. And are you, do you need the um, pagination right now? Or I guess I'm restructuring my question, make sure I'm mm -hmm. asking it accurately. Yeah. Or will the label and field selector be enough for you? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I could do with label selector, but, uh, but I'm thinking like why, you know, I think we, we can support like just fetching all of the results from all of the components, including build launchers, which we don't right now, right? Uh, so I'm wondering why wouldn't we like to do it or provide a, a user way to do it uh, if we can. So yeah, I, I could do like label selector and just, you know, use by name or whatever, but sometimes it's just con convenient for me to to run, to get every every profiler a result and that's it. Mm. My concern with the pagination is that these are ephemeral uh, states. So uh, like what you query at one point uh, may not even exist anymore uh, minutes later. So like pods might change um, and things like that. So the result, like you just wouldn't be able to get up. It would fail, I guess, that request. Indefinitely. So once it fails once, it's going to always fail if you keep trying to get the rest of the pages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So would that mean yeah. because of like, um, like going back to the original problem, which is the the memory usage, would that mean that if if say label selector was the only option, it would mean that it's basically a requirement to make it usable, use use make it usable at all in in, in a large cluster situation is that we would have to have a bunch of labels on there, right? Well, we already have labels. It, it would be- Yeah, uh, no, I mean, you'd have to add a bunch of labels for the, for the, for, to use the profile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because on, on the other hand, when we don't have pagination, like uh, then we would release like a feature, right? This cluster profiler with, okay, uh, ability to to select subset of pods with with label selector, but then we would ship ship a feature with, which would be like internally flawed for the user, you know, not choosing not to use label selector, then like you know, it crashes the whole uh, the whole virt API pod. So it's like for me, it's it's really strange to to have a feature which basically doesn't work uh, when we when we ship it with with, with default arguments right because default for label selector for me it's empty why would someone you know tell you that default is something different and with default default um, arguments it sometimes you would just for some cluster you would just fail with you know out of memory uh, with out of memory error so that's just bad architecture for me right we should not like have it like this that's that's just you know one point of view So like the idea would be like we have this as a default, you know, just as a protection. So instead of having a requirement to, to have a label, we use this as a default protection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, but you know, like you can select some kind of you can choose some kind of label selector which selects, you know, right, right, right. the majority of the pods. So that's that doesn't pro protect us from just failing 
I mean, okay. that makes sense. I think that you, yeah. user should not should not be able to provide arguments. We just make your you know pod crash. I, I think we should protect from this and pagination. You know, it works and yeah, it, it is ephemeral, but um, I'm, hmm. if it helps you all, I, I think I'm fine with it um, because this is, again is not a. I don't even know. I mean, maybe you all would use this in production. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, definitely wouldn't recommend that actually. But uh, if it's useful enough for you all, we should enable it. Yeah. I mean, we could always do like default page size is uh, is zero, which would mean like everything at once. Let's say right. So then. Then we wouldn't have this behavior, this ephemeral behavior, by default. But then user can select a page size, which is you know something smaller. Uh, and then when user explicitly selects the page page size, then he basically agrees that okay, this is uh, you know if, if ephemeral and you know it can break for some in some circumstances. Break meaning the request can will not succeed. Okay, I'll look at. I think I think this makes sense. Uh, what you have, the more I think about. It. I just want to make sure for the default developer use case where somebody's running um, just in their laptop with a couple of nodes and lots of uh, and not a lot of virtual machines and everything. Well, I guess we don't collect the vert launcher stuff yet. I just want to make sure that we get all the information at once for the default case, mm -hmm. and okay. that's not yeah. easy. And I, I think we do. That's all I'm concerned about. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, page size is 10 right now. But I have to think about how yeah, many. If you have anything in mind, it's just like, you know, I just, you know, just thought that these might be good numbers, assuming the size of the of the profilers, right? Because uh, of the profiles, if we have like, you know, let's say one one pod is nine megabytes of, of memory. So 10 is like, uh, you know, 100 megabytes of additional memory. So this seems to be fine. Uh, if you have anything in, in mind, just you know, just comment there. And yeah, so the thing that I have in mind is I just want the default to be able to handle a two-node cluster with all of the components involved. And I think we, I think ten might be exactly how many because we have uh, two instances of operator, uh, API, uh, controller, and handler. So that's eight. Maybe we only need eight. That's all it is. So 10 would definitely cover it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That, that yeah I think sense. we're good. OK. Yeah. Um, I will review this, and I think I'm on board. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, I've got one more question like regarding this change about the virtual launchers. Was there any reason why you decided not to include them um, in your change? or Because I, no. I would like to profile virtual launchers. And see how how it uh, you know behaves and what's there. So I'm just I'm just curious. No, that's fine. I was less interested in vert launchers at the time, uh, simply because um, there's not a lot going on in there, really. So I mean, it's just tied to one workload. Um, but uh, I could see. I, I was thinking about this primarily from a CPU usage standpoint. But I could see for like memory and other things. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So. That was probably a short sight on my part. The difficulty is going to be how to get the information out of the vert launcher. Um, I don't really know exactly how that will be done because it's not it's e we don't control the network on the vert launcher. The virtual machine guest controls the network. So somehow vert handler is going to have to um, get that information to return it the all the the dumped results and everything and also handle starting and stopping and dumping the the vert launcher results it'll be a little tricky would it be crazy yeah. to like go onto the into the pods file system and just take it uh from vert handler now that would be fun that's what i would expect so vert like handler would enumerate and... yeah it would well no you wouldn't even have to do that so Bird Handler exposes a, um, an HTTP endpoint when you have this debug feature flag enabled and everything. This is totally not safe for production. I'll throw that out there again. 
um, because you could anyone can hit this endpoint and get information. Um, <clears throat> they would hit this. Uh, you would hit this dump endpoint, and then Bert Handler behind the scenes would just go in and grant all the VMIs that exist on that node and retrieve from their file systems and return them. Uh, you could do that. But maybe that would be too much information. Then we get back into the, the pagination issue because if you have like 100 virtual machines on a node, then that's a ton of data being returned. I don't know. It gets a little tricky. Uh, you could pod exec and use a copy. Um, sure. Why not? That, that seems like the, the easiest thing. Thanks, thanks. I, I tried to think about something and maybe propose, ah, propose we, some solution. I don't think we give for API the permissions to pod exec into a container anymore. We wanted to remove that, so that might not work. Hmm. This will be tricky. That's the best I can say. And it's possible that if you really want to um, profile a BERT launcher, that the cluster aggregation of all that might be too tedious and that um, we could add some hooks where you can profile it internally by doing your own pod exec in there and getting data. So just bake in the ability to, uh, to turn on and off these profiling uh, stuff into vert launcher and then manually do it. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we're at time. Um, yep. Any any last thoughts? Before we nope. go, I I need to run. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you. Have a good All day. Right. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, guys. Bye.